Danielle from Made Possible by Pop Culture. Marissa Rothman from GiveMeMyRemote.com. And this is our second podcast. If you were with us for the first one, you saw that we talked about our favorite fall shows that are new. But we also wanted to take some time to talk about the most anticipated returning shows. So, I mean, for me, one of them is Chuck, because I kind of got into it later in the game. Um, I wasn't really all caught up as the seasons went on. But I thought the ending of season four would have made such a great series finale. And I'm glad that it wasn't, because I'm glad it's coming back. But it, to me, that makes the return that much more exciting. It's like, well, where do you go? You know, I mean, you have a brand new intersect. You have these characters that, or at least for Chuck himself, started off as a guy that was just a normal guy, given this gift or curse. But now he's this billionaire, basically, that nobody could even imagine being in his shoes. And where do they go? And and what kind of new adversaries do they take on? And I'm just super excited about it. Like I. I don't know. I know it's not till October, but yeah. I think that's probably one of the top two of, of the ones that are returning that I want to get in there and like dive in and see where they're going. I'm actually really excited to see Chuck 2 because I watched parts of the first season and I was off and on for a little bit and I'm back fully on board. It happened for a while, but it just... They've gone through so many of their season finales or so many of their episodes thinking this could be it. This right. might be the final episode. And obviously, the fourth season finale was an example of that. So now that they know for sure exactly. it's coming, what, what are they, they going to bring to the table? Exactly. I mean, I feel like the pressure might be on them more than... It's not like the kind of scale as to loss where they've got to wrap up 5,000 mysteries. But at the same time, you don't want to have the fans say, well, the series finale was great. But I like the season right. four finale better. I like the season two finale better, or whatever mm-hmm. year they deemed the most appropriate. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it adds an entirely new and kind of unusual level of pressure right. for them. And I still, I mean, I said this when we were talking about season finales, and I still hold to it. You know, Scrubs at the end of what yes. they thought was their series finale, Zach Braff's character kind of did this little flash into the future oh thing about what his life could be or what it would be or whatever. And hello, the intersect flashes, I would love to get to see that at the very end, like, yeah, the story is ending, we're not going to get to explore where they go, but I want to see Zach and, or Zach and Sarah, um, <laughs> Chuck and Sarah with some little kid, and obviously they're not going to give us some little kid in the season, nobody can gestate a baby that quickly, but let you them flash know. into the future, you never and let's, their time jump in the middle see. of the season, oh, true, I don't think I don't think they should do that, no. but I just, I want that, like, little montage moment. I, I like that. I know a lot of people think that that's kind of a cop-out to just wrap it up so quickly in, in like, a 30-second, minute-and-a-half combination of images, but I like it. Well, I'm I was going to say, actually... Set it to some good music, and I'm a sucker. I was just thinking of what happens to be another Josh Schwartz show, uh, The O.C. I was mm-hmm. thinking of that finale True. montage where that was so beautiful, you got to see where these characters yeah. were going in their lives, and you know there were still some unanswered questions because you don't know whether Ryan and um, uh, Taylor were right. together or not, which was fine for me because I didn't need to know one way or the other. But there are a lot of things that you kind of saw in a short amount of time with some good music, mm-hmm. and you got closure on these characters that you loved. So I wouldn't mind something similar for Chuck. Yeah, absolutely. Don't kill them all off. <laughs> so speaking of not wanting to kill people off. And you know, losing characters we love, a show I am, you know, shockingly surprised. It's <laughs> just huge shock. Excited about is Fringe, because as I'm sure everyone is probably aware, Joshua Jackson not off the show, and so in my mind, there's really no doubt that Peter will come back. Right. But for me, I have no idea as to how he's going to come back. Because, you know, you can speculate five million different things, but given what happened in the finale, both in the final hour of the three parts and the final moments, you don't know how he's going to be, who he's going to be, what kind of memories he has, what kind of just existence he will have. And, you know, he will be back, but in what form, what his his absence is going to do to everyone around him? Because he does, he was essential to this team coming together because without him right. Walter wouldn't have been able to get out of the mental hospital it's just so many things would be different and yes there are now missing babies it's very tragic yeah, and that, I, I don't know I guess like when I 
I caught up with Fringe late, uh, as I tend to do, um, and I marathoned it, and I guess, like, I kind of saw it differently, like, from the science of things, that my brain was kind of always saying, well, who's to say that, that just because what happened in the alternate world changed the fact that now Peter doesn't, there's, I, I can say it, you guys have seen it, whatever, <laughs> that he's not supposed to exist, but who's to say that, that it's not didn't something in our world didn't change and that that Peter didn't get a chance to grow up and live and maybe it's and my whole thing was I just feel like that's the obvious thing is that like something might have happened so that that one could grow up and obviously he's a different Peter because he had different experiences and whatever it shaped him um, right maybe maybe not as much maybe still you don't know because yeah. he went through a terrible illness and right. that's a different kind of trauma but I, o I almost feel like that's too easy of, a, of an answer for a show like this. And so I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it as well, but I feel like I need to go back and like catch up again on at least the last few of, of the end of season three before we get into four. Just to like, okay, I definitely see these clear points here, and it's going to make total sense where they go. Really, that's the worst homework ever having to rewatch Friends. I know, it's terrible. Terrible job. We've watched TV job. all day. I know. Stare at Joshua Jackson again. Again, so unprofessional. <laughs> I don't know it's going to be a theme. I, I don't know if you've seen the promos. I have. But the season, I, because, quite frankly, I think the person who does their promos yeah. is a genius. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, watch I, them and I'm like, oh. right. I don't, I don't really write about promos because it's kind of hard for me to like write around it because there's so much speculation and, you know. But I have seen them because I, I of course, I want to see every little bit that they give us before it actually airs. I'm not a person who wants to be surprised. I want the spoilers ahead of time. I know what to expect so then I can, like, watch it and see how it makes total sense when it comes. So, yes, I'm very, very excited by the promos. I love promos. I, I get ridiculously excited about them. Sometimes I make eeps or nice. weird noises. Okay. Confessional time here. Mm -hmm. Sure, um, why not? But, you know, they, they have had a lot of office promos, which is understandable because mm -hmm. obviously... There's a lot of changes. There's a lot of changes. We don't know who the new boss is. We know, obviously, James Vader is yes. on the series. But, you know, Smo, just in the same vein, I don't think I've seen one SVU promo for the new season. And they That's have and they just have as many changes. changes, both on the production side yeah. and with the casting side. And I don't think I've seen anything for that. Right, yeah. We've seen a couple photos of them doing the uh, behind the scenes of the new... Uh, opening credits but but I almost I've wonder like a show like that is yes they're going through some changes but it's been on for so long it's so right. well established it almost doesn't matter those fans are going to be back no but it's up against CSI for the first time ever yes. and that'll be an interesting ch change because CSI has been they on have a lot almost as fans. many years and it's, it's a lot of the same that's fans that's true so I mean obviously I understand in that sense I mean I don't think I've seen Parks and Recreation either no yeah, off the top of my head, I don't remember. But, I mean, I feel you know, like I, I really do feel like it's the networks are, are more focusing on the new shows. And I get that. Like, you want to launch something and people haven't seen anything from those shows. You know, if you're not us and you don't get review copies of things, all you're going by are those promos. And so they have to not only show you what's in the show, but then do those, like, NBC's been doing those stylized ones now where they're talking directly to the yeah. camera. So I, I understand that. Um, I don't know. I just... I get so excited that I just, I want, I want my shows back on my TV. Reruns are not enough. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully you'll get promos and in less than a month the yeah. shows will be back. Well, yeah, back. I was going to say, the shows will be back soon enough, and then I'm sure we'll see episode promos for all the new episodes, and I'll take this back, and I'll, I'll be inundated with so much that I'm like, stop. It's too much. Just stop. You're like, too much TV. Because I don't know how you do it without a TV or some of us. No, that's a discussion for the next one, I guess. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You can all yell at me about that. No yelling. No yelling. No yelling. No yelling. But if there's a show that you're excited to see return, you can tweet us, and maybe we'll talk about it in the next next podcast, because we, we are planning some more of these, assuming you guys like them and want us to stick around. So, at Danielle TBD. At Marissa Rothman. Right there on the screen. We're fancy. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys.